Green Town Environmental, Ireland's trusted provider of infrastructure maintenance. We offer a range of integrated and essential services. concern for our environment. Fortunately, we're specialists in invasive weed control and can provide insurance bag treatment plans to eliminate this destructive plant and many others. Environmental provides gully and drainage services to clear any blockages and make sure everything is running smoothly. Our sister company, Greentown TM, specializes in all aspects of traffic management. They're committed to providing a personal service with professional results. Good evening and welcome to Brewster Park in Inniskillen and to Monaghan Brothers from Anna GA TV. We're here this evening for the start of the Westville Hotel Division 1 League and what an encounter to start. It's Belnalek against Inniskillen here in Brewster Park and I'm joined on commentary this evening by uh, Mark Henry. Mark, you're very welcome to From Anna GA TV. What a mouthwatering clash to start the league. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jet. It's great to be here. Um, and certainly an intriguing one, um, two teams that uh, would certainly have their eye on, on prizes as the season progresses and interesting as well to see some big names back in the Belnalek outfit as well. Yeah, and before we come to the teams, you know, I was thinking about this today, Inniskillen are beaten in the championship final last year, beaten in the league final, Belnalek have been there, thereabouts, maybe dipped a bit this past 18 months or so, but the big names are back. Which of those, these sides do you believe are further down the road in terms of their progression and maybe getting their hands on silverware? Well, I suppose if, if you reflect on, on last year, you'd be you'd be suggesting that Enniskill and Gales are probably a wee bit ahead of Belnalek. Um, you know, they, they obviously beat Belnalek in the championship last year up in Edirne mm. um, quite, quite comfortably on the day. But... Um, you know, two years ago, was it three years ago, Belnalek drew with Derek Onley here. Yeah. Very unlucky not to beat them. And as you pointed out there, Belnalek now have some big players back again. So in terms of, of overall progression over the last three years, I suppose Enniskillen's trajectory has been gradually upwards. Um, Belnalek moved forward very quickly um, up until about a couple of years ago. Then lost with just some players. They're back now, so I would expect them to, to, to jump significantly in terms of their, their performance levels this year, Jet. Yeah, well, you spoke about Belnalek, and this gives us a quick opportunity to give the uh, teams, uh, the Belnalek side, Conor McGovern is in goals. Fergal Keenan will wear two. Shea Cullen, the returning Shea Cullen, will wear three. Garrett Kavanagh will wear four. Then Lee Cullen, also in the Belenleck team, will wear five. Glenn Tracy at six. And Cian Connor at seven. At eight is Peter Monaghan. And nine is Darren McGurn. 
10 is Dermot Loosley, 11 is Brian Owens, and number 12 is James Speed. And the full forward line then is Garvin Quigley will wear the number 13 jersey, 14 is Conor McCauley, and a 15 is Ronan Quigley. And I'll bring uh, Mark in for a moment on in a moment's time, but first of all, we will have a moment's silence here in memory of Jerry Cassidy, who was who passed away last weekend. Uh, of course, the Cassidy Group are the sponsors of the Westville Hotel Division One League, and also we will have a moment's silence for Damien Casey, who tragically died in Spain yesterday. I wonder if we observe a minute's silence for Jerry Cassidy and of course Damien Casey, the Tyrone hurler who tragically passed away yesterday. We'll give then a skill and Gales team and then we'll get a word from Mark before throw in. Uh, Keane Newman is in goals, Ryan McDonald will wear two, Paddy Cassidy at three and James Ferguson at four. Arne Nolan five, Josh Horn will wear six, Kieran Smith will wear seven. Middle of the field we'll see Owen Beacom and Johnny Cassidy eight and nine. Half forward line Ronan Beatty's ten, Neil McDermott eleven, Conor McShea twelve, Conor Kelly will wear thirteen, Conor Love fourteen and then uh, John Rehill will wear the number 15 jersey. So two teams um, laced with uh, plenty of star star players, uh, I would say, Mark. Oh, with plenty of talent on both sides, Jet. Um, that half-back line of Belna Lex, uh, Lee Cullen, Glenn Tracy and Cian Connor uh, should be a launch pad for a lot of what Belna Lex will try to do well this evening. Um, and then I'm immediately drawn to the inside line of, of Enniskill and Connor, Connor Love and John Rachel. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. Yeah, it really is. Uh, when you look at the county uh, players that are represented, their county are currently, and in the past we have uh, a serious number uh, involved. I can see Paddy Rehill, 18 in there, starting for, for the Gales. Yeah, um, Paddy in Real. it, it centre forward. Yeah, Paddy Real, a late addition. Uh, well spotted there by Mark. We'll get a an update on who he comes in for as our referee this evening. Uh, Jared Gallagher from the Devonish and Mary's Club as Johnny Casty comes roaring through the centre. There's a brilliant run from Casty. Lays it back there to his midfield partner, Owen Bacon. This could be the first score of the game. It is. We've played 12 seconds. The ball goes over the bar. Fine score and a maybe sign of what's to come this yeah, evening. Yeah, brilliant start. Um, and kind of we were chatting off air just before the game began, um, Jet, about Johnny Casty in the mm -hmm. middle of the field and the threat that he would bring going forward and we saw it there and of course we know Owen Beacom can strike beautiful scores with that left foot and he did it there yeah a wonderful score shades of I suppose maybe what uh, Tomas Galligan done to from yes, there right. a couple of weeks ago uh, on this very pitch when he strode through the centre from the throw up and bombed the ball to the back of the net but on this occasion Johnny Casty laid it off to Owen Beacom and Owen with that trusty left boot tapped it over the bar for the opening score of the game of Ballinac get their hands on the ball and in the shape there of Glenn Tracy Tracy a great young prospect gives it in there to Conor McCauley strong purposeful run from McCauley well tagged on this occasion by Paddy Casty strong play from Casty the referee allows play to continue ball goes back I see a change on the uh, Ballinac team as well Frank Rafferty's in there ball now in the hands of Cian Connor. Connor in the sunshine here in Brewster Park. Beautiful evening here in Inniskillen. Ball back to Cian Connor. You're listening and watching Monon Brothers from Anna GA TV for this, the Westville Hotel Division 1 encounter between Inniskillen Gales and Ballinac as Dara McGorn looks for an immediate response for the men from Ballinac and Dara McGorn pops that one over the bar. The two midfielders have got a point each and the sides are level. Yeah, and that's it. Who should describe that as a typical Dara McGurn uh, score uh, coming charging through into the final third and uh, he struck it really, really well. Um, just watching here too, the, the, the Belnalek side have pushed. Oh, he's given a free. Well, he's bringing the ball he's back. Giving a free, he? He's giving it back, well, yeah. The ball had gone over the I bar, thought so, I think. Yeah. yeah. But our referee 
this evening. Jared Goller, I was writing the, the score down, so I have Darren McGoran's yeah, name down right. on the, the sheet in front of me, so maybe I will have to change it, maybe I won't, but uh, the referee evidently had blown his whistle before that ball was kicked over the bar, so hence has been brought back, and Darren McGoran is about, what, 40, 42 metres out, a little bit less when he kicks it in. Usual preamble from McGurn, kicks it well by the looks of things, and I can leave Dar McGurn's name yep. in as a, a point scorer, so one point apiece. We've played uh, just over two minutes, and a quick kick out from Kean Newman. Out it goes to the centre of the field, well picked up on this occasion by the wing half forward there. That's Conor McShea. McShea to Beacom. Beacom steadies down, lays the ball off. Ball played across now towards Conor Kelly. Kelly for the Gales, Kelly, 35 metres out, onto the left foot, gets a shot away. It's 100% accuracy so far from both these teams. There's been three excellent scores, and that one from Connor Kelly is a fine strike. They lead yeah. two points to one. Well worked. Um, Aaron Nolan picked up the break there and, and fed Kelly, and he, he steadied down, and he kicked an excellent point there. Um, no, a really good start to the game, as you say, 100% accuracy, Jet. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take that this evening. I see the, the bunch kick out by being employed by the Balanek squad. And now the break, and now coming out into the pocket there and picking that one up is Conor McCauley. McCauley kicks it forward, not the best ball in the world, but it's kept in place in, in field by James Speed. Speed lays it forward there to Peter Monaghan. Monaghan gives it down inside. Been close to the sideline. Did it go out over the sideline? No, it's uh, been turned over. And Josh Horn uh, lays it off there to James Ferguson. And Ferguson over there now towards Conor McShea. McShea fires it inside, looking for John Rehill. Immediately getting the tackle in there was Lee Cullen. Ball back inside now to McShea to Rehill. Rehill back to Josh Horn. Horn flicks it forward. Possession football, good turn there from McShea. Has to come back one more time, 45 metres out. Spreads the play over the far side of the field. Gales patient in this build up now in the shape of Aaron Nolan. Nolan gives it back there to Johnny Casty. Casty looks up and sees the fact that Balanek have 13 players behind the ball and therefore this is going to have to be a patient build up and try and eke a little bit of space. There is space just on the edge of the D there but that's been filled now but the ball is in the hands of Connor Kelly. Back it goes to Johnny Casty. Casty, 45 metres out, threads the ball over the far side of the field, terrace side in Brewster Park, picked up over there by Kelly. Kelly lays it inside to Casty. Casty now a little bit of space, uh, puts down the burners, but coming across there to tackle hard is Shea Cullen. Cullen goes to ground. Uh, well, the referee seen a foot in there, I think, on that yeah. occasion, Mark. Um, Belenlec, free. Yeah, Belenlec defended that very well because there was plenty of movement in the Gales forward lane um, and Johnny carried the ball into to contact with Shea Cullen, which is never a good idea. No. Uh, good tackle and uh, Belenlec won the free out. Yeah, Frank Rafferty takes the free. The referee, well, that looked a foul from this position, but... Jared Goller allows play to continue. Now Josh Horn picks it up. Horn threads a nice ball inside, looking for Real. Real lays it back one more time. Opportunity still presents itself there for the Gales and Paddy Real, but Real shot has gone to the right hand side and wide first wide of the evening but yeah it was a good it was a good pass in by josh horn into john rehill but he needed someone coming off his shoulder he had to delay and and, and feed the ball out too far and it left it a difficult enough chance for Paddy rehill yeah um kick out will be taken now by connor mcgovern mcgovern gets it out towards glenn tracy man picked up a serious hand injury uh earlier in the year so it's good to see glenn back uh, playing at centre half back for uh, Balanek. Ball coming out with Gareth Kavna. Kavna. Good bit of pace. Lays it forward there now. Looking for uh, James Speed. Speed does well. Holds on to possession. Gives it to McCauley. McCauley tackled strongly there by Josh Horn and tackled illegally by Josh Horn. And the referee might well yeah. want to have a little word with Josh Horn. Very aggressive in the tackle. It there. was. And look, I suppose he was high just. He was, yeah. he was up around the, the shoulders. And anything in around that area now tends to, to, to earn you a booking. But it was, a, it was a, a definitely an aggressive enough uh, foul by Josh now. Yeah, good to see Josh back in it the is indeed. jersey. A fine footballer, as you will know, coming through St Michael's, part of that wonderful St Michael's team that won the Hogan Cup final. In 2019, well, he was away in Liverpool, I think, studying, but back in the, the Gales jersey, which is great to see. Pleasing for uh, Inniskillen Gales and, indeed, Fermanagh Gales, as 
Ballon like are being tackled very, very hard there, holding on to possession as James Speed has he overcarried? He has indeed aggressive tackling there. Mm. Joe Callan coming out of the dugout there. Yeah, it's just a little bit of an edge getting into the mm. game, which no harm yet. Um, yeah. We want to see a competitive game, but the end of skill and tackling there was ferocious and it was legal, um, and they, they forced the they forced the overcarry. So uh, good work by the by the Gales team. And to be fair to Jared Goller, he does let play. He does, goal. yeah. He's yeah. not a referee that uh, blows a lot. He, he, he tends to let play move on if at all possible. Just when we mention Richard O'Callan, he's missing tonight for the Gales, recovering from a. a ankle injury and also missing of course is Brandon Horn out with a hamstring injury as the Gales come forward looking for another score ball laid off a little bit of space over on the far side there for Aaron Nolan Nolan gives it back there to uh, Conor McShea McShea lays it off one more time and Skillen will have to come back out towards Josh Horn high challenge on Horn there but he manages to retain possession lays it forward one more time a little bit of space now for Kieran Smith Smith lays it inside now the chances with Conor McShea, McShea on to the left, it's high and dropping, the goalkeeper comes for it, Ooh, just about gets it at the second uh, occasion, some difficult there yeah, as well. Yeah, and he was under pressure, he was under pressure but he took it at the second attempt, it's Dwayne, it's Dwayne McNulty I think some goals there, yeah. um, he did well um, under say, serious pressure. Yeah, Dwayne McNulty wearing number 16 is the goalkeeper, so a couple of changes that we weren't made aware of before the game, so... Uh, ball in the hands of Cian Connor. Connor flicks it forward there, but Johnny Casty's back uh, doing his defensive duties. Lays it forward now to Paddy Rehill. Rehill looks up. Good run down this wing here from Ryan McDonald. McDonald in a little bit of space, trying to chase after him there is Peter Monaghan, but McDonald gathers possession. Wearing number two. Lays it back there to John Rehill. Back inside he goes, but. Out over the sideline it goes. Yeah, well, that's, and that's Connor Love wearing number. Connor, yeah, yeah and jersey and again, there as well. Bandelek did very well. Three defenders converged on him there. Um, Connor tried to flick the ball and take it again uh, over the head, but uh, the Bandelek defence saw it out. Yeah, so John Reels wearing number 14, and Connor Love is wearing number 15. Well held again. That's a couple of kickouts. Yeah, that, uh, McCauley, McCauley's, McCauley's doing well. Great ball looking there now for Shea Cullen. Shea Cullen opportunity to stretch his legs. Going with him there on the far side is Dara McGorn. McGorn gathers it, but well closed down quickly there by Paddy Castley. He's had an impressive opening of the game. McGor McGorn turns and twists and shoots. That's a wonderful effort yeah. from Dara McGorn. He was in all sorts of problems there with he uh, was Castley, but he done really, yeah, really well. And, and the pass from Shea Cullen didn't do him any favours. He had to break stride in order to take the pass, but he did really well to shake off the defender and kick a great score. Yeah, just a wee bit of rustiness there and Shea Cullen ah, with yeah. that pass. But... I'm sure Pell and Lech are delighted to have him back in their side. Ten minutes played here in the opening half. It's two points apiece here on Monaghan Brothers from Anna GATV. Another opportunity now for another skill. Ball fed for surely a goal. Surely a penalty. Yes, pulled down. Yeah. The referee is awarded the penalty. Had to be. Pulled down there. Going through was Paddy Real. Paddy Real, yeah. yeah. And, and take your pick. It was either the keeper or, or the it was both. A combination, <laughs> yeah. I think they were, they were making sure he wasn't going to get the goal yeah. there. And... Um, the only danger here, I hope he doesn't find himself in Sean Patton territory yeah. with, the, with the black card. Wayne McNulty, no, he's all right. He's yeah. all right. Referee not uh, even taking out the notebook. He had a little word, I think, to inform the goalkeeper to stay on his, on his line. So it's Ryan McNulty that's the, in the goals. And it's Owen Beacom. Here comes Beacom with the left foot. He's got a point already. Kicks it. Ooh, just under the body of the goalkeeper. I think the keeper had read where he was he going had, to put yeah. it. He had, yeah, and to be fair to Beacom, he, he kept it on the carpet. If he had if he had kicked it a bit any higher at all, uh, McDulty certainly would have got a hand on it. It was a super penalty by, by Beacom. Yeah, big big score, uh, 11 minutes into the game, important goal for the skill in the lead by that three points now. Yeah, and probably probably just about deserved to be in the lead at this stage, Jed. Yeah. Ball kicked out this time, forage and forward over there, and winning it is Conor McShea. McShea does well, needs a bit of support. Referee allows play to continue. Glenn Tracy forces the turner, gets it out to Shea Cullen. Shea holds the ball, flicks it inside intelligently to Speed. Speed gives it inside to Tracy. Tracy flicks it on one more time. Opportunity now for uh, Frank Rafferty. 
Feeds a good ball forward, looking for Cian Connor. Well, out there was Cian Newman, done really, really well. Read the danger, was out, and well, bravely as well, because yeah. Cian Connor was coming out at some pace. Absolutely, two things about that. Ooh. He read it, oh, kicked it out over the sideline. Yeah. No, um, Cian, Cian Newman read that very early, and as you say then, Jet was very, very brave in terms of going to make sure he got the interception. Yeah, good piece of goalkeeping from Cian Newman. Ball fed forward to Cian Connor. This is something in the skill, and we'll have to look out for the foraging runs of Lee Cullen, Glenn Tracy, and Cian Connor from that Bell and Alec half back line as the ball is in the hands of Garvin Quigley. A tricky customer is Quigley, gets a shot away, but I think it's tail yeah. to the left. Yep, and gone wide. First wide for Bell and Alec. One yeah. wide apiece, and one two to two after 12 and a half minutes. Yeah, and Garvin had done really well to jink himself into a bit of space there, and he'd be disappointed with that finish because. Um, Garvin's well, well capable of finishing those from that from that distance. He'd be disappointed with that. Yeah, I'm just trying to identify the referee. Has pulled it back again. Oh, he has, is right. Seen a, a tug on the jersey, evidently taking quickly opportunity now for a goal. Fired in by Garvin quickly and fired over the bar, but it was quick thinking there from it Darren was, Gordon. It was and and quickly again did well, but he he might be thinking to himself, the goal was on. Yeah, and it was. It probably was. Yeah. He probably went for the crossbar. Yeah. Kick out taken again. Uh, very accurate in the in the kick outs. Uh, Keen Newman, he's got getting his kicks away he very is. very quickly. They're all long, I notice as well. But he's finding the intended target, so there must be a fair bit of work done on the training field on kick outs. I would suggest. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And look, it's such an important part of the game now that every team's doing that jet, and you can see. You can see that the, the keeper knows what's happening and the players out the field are giving him options all the time. Paddy Rail in towards his brother John. John does well out in front of Lee Cullen. John retains possession. The two Cullens, the twins, are uh, uh, on Rail. The ball has gone out and it's a wide ball. Well, when you've Shane yeah. Lee Cullen converging on yep. you, I think there's only one result. You'd be doing a good day's work to get past one of them, <laughs> but when the two of them have you backed into a corner, literally, yeah. you have no chance. No, I didn't fancy no. John's chances. No. <laughs> Up the goal, McGorn, brilliant take from McGorn. He's been picked up now by Paddy Cassidy. There's a great battle between Cassidy and McGorn. Strong running from Darren McGorn. Still he goes, uh, going back there as well as Roland Beatty. This is powerful run from McGorn. Lays it back there he, to Brian Oates. There's yeah, an advantage, the boot, yeah. The boot came off, did it? Yeah, brilliant take in the, mi in the middle ah, of the field. Superb, McGorn superb. Away he went. Um, and look, he, he, the intent was clear from the minute that he took that kick out. He was turning and he was going. And he had he had Ronan Beatty and I think was it Paddy Casty chasing him down. Yeah. But neither of them could get to him without fouling. It was a superb piece of work. And Belnalek have now done that again with long kickouts. McNulty has hit both Conor McCauley and now McGurn a couple of times, um, and it's working for them too. Brian Owens with the kick should be a simple opportunity for a man of Brian Owens' quality, and it is. And the goal, well, that's two points out of the, the goal. Yeah. Uh, Cancelled out. Good response. Quickly. Yeah, good yeah. response from Belna Lack. And that's the first, really, we've seen of Brian Owens. Uh, Brian will be keen to get into the game now from open play as well. It'll be interesting to see this kick out now because uh, Belna Lack have caught on what the ploy is. And on this occasion, well, it's broke favourite yeah. with the referee. Sees a foul on Glenn Tracy. So the kick outs are really, really important in Gaelic football, as you've alluded to. Yeah. And now the, the Belna Lack have started to work out what Keane Newman's. Uh, that's exactly it and to be fair to the, the Belnalek lads they have they've begun to figure it out and they've put themselves into the position mm. to, to, to break it and to win breaks and yeah. Glenn Tracy did really really well under that one and here goes Conor McCauley another strong powerful player in towards Owens I think it may have been the defender who got his foot in yeah James Ferguson yeah. came across there and got the foot in and cleared his lines put it out for a 45 umpires yeah. and referee agree I think so yeah and look James Ferguson has done really well on Brian Owens Brian Owens has showed for two or three balls uh, Ferguson has got a hand in each time and that time it was a, uh, I think it was a foot he got in that time to, to prevent maybe Brian hit, kicking that one towards goal so that's a, again a really good battle and one to keep watching oh, there's some great battles out there Johnny Casty on Conor McCauley uh, Paddy uh, Casty on uh, Darren McGorn and the one you mentioned James Ferguson yeah. there on uh, Brian Owens and then up the other side you have Lee, Lee Cullen on John, John Rehill yeah. and Garrett Kavanagh on, on Conor Love yeah, great kick, yeah. kick there. That's a super, super score. kick from Garvin Quigley. He may be a, a diminutive figure, but uh, he, yeah. he hit that ball really, really well. Uh, he's a super striker of the ball, Garvin. He's a really, really clever, tricky inside forward. And, and as you can see there, he can strike the ball off the ground too. Well, that's the goal cancelled out. And it's level pegging here. 1-2. Uh, 
to, well, the scoreboard says six. I had it down as five, but we'll check that in a moment. Yeah, it is. It is five, uh, I've been told. So the scoreboard uh, trying to throw us there. As Owen Baker, good ball in. This man has been very purposeful in the opening 15 minutes. That's Aaron Nolan. Lays it back. Not the best ball, but inside it goes towards Rafferty or towards ah, Matty yeah. Real. Charging there. Yeah, I'm charging, yeah. charging, yeah. Yeah, I think the referee. Got I think, that yeah, fair on. call. Um, yeah. Unlucky, Paddy, Paddy Real did brilliantly to take and win that ball, um, but he certainly was charging. Yeah, we haven't mentioned the two brothers yet that uh, aren't playing. The two on the sideline. Oh, it's right, it's <laughs> right, it's right. <laughs> we'll come and to that in a moment. We will, we will. We'll, we'll follow the play for, for a moment and we'll, we'll get a word on, on that in the next break and play. Of course, uh, Colm uh, Bradley and Simon Bradley in respective dugouts tonight here on a pitch that they graced for so many years as the ball is being carried forward by Garvin Quigley who's becoming a, a, an ever a more impressive operator in this game and here he is again opportunity he's got two points already steadies down kicks it well does a curl in oh that's a super that's score, score from Garvin Quigley his third uh, three out of the last four points have came from Garvin Quigley Super score. Garvin has burst into life and has having a significant impact in this game now in the last 10 minutes. Um, foraging deep that time, um, taking a 1 2, and he, he, f he finished that absolutely brilliantly. Um, yeah, the two lads, it's, a, it's yeah. probably a strange one for Colin. Uh, Colin. But it, of course, it will be um, uh, obviously played with, with huge distinction for mm. the Gales for years, and, and obviously has now been managing Bell and Alec for a number of years. But just watching the, the two of them on the sidelines yet. Um, Simon's much more reserved and, and calm. Colin very animated, um, much more active and, and, and loud along the, the, the sideline. So it's just interesting to watch the, the, the two different approaches. Yeah, and Neil Cox, of course, in with Simon Bradley this year as well. Darren McManus, I see there as well. So that's the Gales management team. As Johnny Casty fires a ball inside, but Garrett Kavner yeah. is alert to that one, gathers it uh, very easily and lays it off there to Fergal Keenan. Keenan coming straight out. Balanek now leading by a point, six to one two. Coming in, playing really well since that uh, upset of that penalty that put them three behind. They've hit the last four points. They're in possession of the football with Peter Monan. Not the best ball in the world towards Darren McGorn, but McGorn does well. Had a man inside, but again strong challenge. But McGorn gets the shot away. Has it gone yeah. to the left and gone wide? It has. But there was strong tackling there yeah, by Paddy Real yeah. yet again. No, um, look. Dara, Dara won a difficult, difficult ball, um, manufactured a bit of space, but he was under serious pressure and he just pulled the shot. Kick out now again. Newman looking to go long, nothing short from him at all. Kicks it long out in the centre of the field. John Real is out there, but again, Garvin, Garvin. quickly. Oh, alert to where that break or the, where that ball was going to drop and picked it up, gives it to Rafferty. And really, in terms of p possession at the moment, it's Balalek are really dominating in possession with Glenn Tracy. Good ball over there now towards Lee Cullen. Cullen thinks about f advancing forward, gives it inside there to James Speed. Speed, good ball inside. Should be another score. Over the bar it goes, popped over. Good football again. Ah, Excellent yeah. score. That time Brian Owens was the man who popped it over. Yeah, popped That's that his one. second point of the game. Popped that one over with the left foot, and, and we kind of alluded to it uh, about five minutes ago. Yet the Belenlek have got a handle on the Enniskill and kick out, yeah. and they're now they're now getting scores off the Enniskill and kick out. Yeah, yeah. And, and I notice now Keen Newman has elected to go short, and Johnny Casty was alert to that and picked it up. And the Gales now have possession. They've been starved of that for the last. Uh, well, we, we look at when the penalty was scored, it was in the 11th minute, and since then, uh, Bell and Lack have hit five points without response, that's nine minutes, and really dominated possession, but here come the Gales now, looking for a response from Conor Kelly, Kelly's been bottled up there by Garrett Cavan, or by Fergal Keenan, referee allows play to continue, and again another turnover, Bell and Lack are working really, yeah. really hard all over the pitch look, mark. Look, both teams are really applying themselves, sometimes... With a league game, you're not sure how it will, will, will pan out, but both teams are going at this hammer and tongs, Jack. And Tracy lays it off there, an opportunity now, again for Garvin Quigley, back to McCauley, can he finish? Oh, the foot came in there across from James Ferguson, referee looks at it, referee points to the spot, does he? I think he does, I think this is going to be a penalty. Well... Yeah, yep. indeed he is. I, that was my initial thought. My only question was, was it inside or outside? 
Well, look, you can see the player picking himself up there now, uh, Conor McCauley, and he's outside the box as he picks himself yeah. up. So, look, it was obviously marginal, and I've got a feeling that's why Jared maybe delayed in pointing for, for the penalty or mm. the free kick to get a good look of exactly where it happened. Yeah, we may have a wee look at it here on uh, a replay, if at all possible. Uh, we'll keep an eye on Dara McGurn and Cian Newman, Cian out chatting them there. So, county colleagues, of course, we'll, we'll maybe come back to that once the penalty is uh, struck by McGurn. So McGurn versus Newman, two players who know the, the, each other really well. Oh, powerful, powerful strike there by Dara McGurn. Well, if you had two goalkeepers in the goal, I don't think that no. would have been saved. So two penalties, one for the other side. Yeah, and no, now Balalek one, lead one, seven to one, two. Superb, and let's superb have a word mark on this one. No. That's, a, that's a, the, the score from score. Brian Owens, yeah. 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 Oh, no, a brilliant, brilliant strike by Dara McGurn. Um, high and, and, and into the top corner of that, the, the net, an absolutely superb score. Well, this has been an excellent away, first half. Away again. Here goes McGurn again in possession, turns onto the right foot, may get a second chance. Has he carried it too long? Referee allows play to continue. Again, Glenn Tracy, he's having a terrific end to this half as well. Into Brian Owens. Brian Owens pops it over the bar. This has been brilliant from Balalek in the last. 15 minutes to now lead by six or lose by three yep. in the 11th minute 20, 23 minutes now 11 minutes later or 12 minutes later the lead by six do you know what has struck me their use of the ball yeah uh, their decision making their use of the ball yeah. their passing is so crisp that they're running off the ball everything's just going for them right at the minute and there's another kick out one as well jet and here comes shea colin can he get in and act with the left foot well that was ambitious from from shea uh, and it goes to the left and right, but confidence is yeah, brimming through the side. And absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm picking out the young players, the likes of Glenn Tracy, Garvin, Quigley. They have been absolutely superb right. over the last 10 minutes or so. Absolutely top drawer. Um, Glenn Tracy has, has uh, had a massive impact in the game from day from day one, actually, Jet. Yeah. Um, young player playing at centre half back, he's having a huge influence. Kick out again. This time the Gales get their hands on it with Conor McShea, does well. Gales really need a score at this stage and Johnny Casty has the pace he's taking on Keenan does well still Casty now can he finish Casty still going what a run oh what a save is it in the back of the net it is what a game this is Connor Kelly is the man who pumps or who strokes it into the back of the net but that goal was all about Johnny Casty what a run what a shot Great save, but there to tap it in was Connor yeah, Kelly. Yeah, they got the rub of the green just with the with the rebound falling to Connor. But you would argue with the the, the work that Johnny Cassidy did there, they deserved that goal. It was an absolutely superb run, um, and a brilliant shot, brilliantly blocked. And to say then Connor Kelly was the right man in the right place just to finish off the rebound. Well, this has been a terrific first half of football. It has to be said. It you know. Y y you knew coming down to this game it had the potential to be a brilliant game of football and it really has delivered we've only played 25 minutes we've yeah, had three goals and what is it 10 points in those 25 yeah, minutes no, look, and, and it, it's, it's as I said earlier on sometimes with league games you don't know how much the two teams will put into it but both these teams are going at it both these teams want to win the, the, the tackling is ferocious, it's aggressive, it's very disciplined in most cases, um, and it's making for an absolutely cracking spectacle. Yeah, Darren McGorn steadies down. He scored 1-2 in the game to date. Is that 1-3? Yeah. It is indeed. That's fine kicking by Darren McGorn. He hasn't missed too much tonight. No, and you know that the Gales are struggling to pin him down. Um, playing inside uh, they're looking for him regularly and he has he has the likes of Brian Owens and, and Garvin Quigley running around and um, darting around him as well creating space so it's a, it's a very potent inside line they have at the minute this a oh, good kick out and, and this man as well he's been yeah really really important for the Gales as an outlet that's Conor McShay that's the last two balls that have been fired out that wing he has won them picked up now by Josh Horn. Horn run over on this near side by Ronan Beatty. Can he be found? But he's been tracked at this stage. Ball now uh, in the centre of the field. And it goes to Horn again. Horn back. It goes there. One more time to Paddy Rahal. Ball is picked up eventually. to Back to Horn. Now Balanelak get plenty of players behind the ball. 13 behind the ball at this stage. Good tackling again. And another Garvin turnover. Quigley. Garvin Quigley again. 
Yeah, it's been absolutely excellent. Look at the pace of him. Brought it forward. Did he carry too long? Referee says no. Lowe's player to continue. He did bring it into it, the look, tackle. He brought it into contact. Yeah. He brought it into contact. There was two Gales defenders there. And look, Garvin has many attributes, but his physicality is not one of them. Yeah, and Glenn Tracy. Yeah, again. mopping up again yeah. and using the ball sensibly too. Yeah, as another opportunity now for Ballinalak to come forward. Meanwhile, Garvin quickly is receiving some attention in the middle of the field. We'll follow the player and Conor McCauley, uh, or I should say Peter Monaghan, is in possession of the football for Ballinalak. Monaghan lays it off there. Ball still in the hands of Fergal Keenan. Keenan working hard, lays it back now to Dara McGorn. McGorn takes on Casti again, or uh, yeah, Paddy Casti again. It's Fouled a great, again, ba yeah. great battle this. Yeah, sort of. absolutely superb. Took the two Casti brothers to come over there to deal with Dara. Yeah, and Dara's been fouled now two or three times this evening. They are, when he gets turned and gets going, he's very, very hard to stop. So Dara McGorn has the opportunity to. Come on to the field of play. There's a change there, is there on the in the Skill and Gales team? Ryan Jack Turney. Yeah, has Jack come Turney on. has come yeah. on in place of Ryan McDonnell. Um, that would be in response to the the performance of Garvin Quigley in the last 20 yeah. minutes, Jet. Dar McGorn, everything is hit today. That's just that's sublime. Incredible. That's sublime. That's yeah. a super, 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 super score strike. from Dar McGorn. Look, if you take the angle there, what he was, I'm sure, 50 metres oh, out. That's a massive, massive score. Um, and, you know, Enniskillen are maybe going to have to look to take Connor Love out. Connor's standing in there in the full forward line and they're not able to get ball to him. If they bring him out for five minutes before half time, they might be able to make something happen a bit. Yeah, he hasn't been involved no. in the game at all, really. As McGorn tackles hard on this occasion. Foul. And taken quickly there by Paddy Rehill. Gives it to Kane Newman. Newman, the goalkeeper. Striding forward, not a lot to hit at this juncture. Still continues his run, yeah. and Josh Horn is in possession. Newman now is on the opposition 45 meter line, stays there. Now elects to go back as in a skill and gales gather possession there with Aaron Nolan. Lays it off to Ronan Beatty. Beatty left footed, Jinx turns onto the left foot, can he finish, comes off the outside of the left boot, into the safe hands there of the goalkeeper Ryan McNulty, and now uh, Balanelec will have an opportunity to come forward again, Glenn Tracy in possession, oh, great yeah, vision from ball. Tracy over there towards Shea Cullen, Cullen needs support has it there from Conor McCauley, very fit this Balanelec team moving up and down the pitch, Darren McGorn makes his move inside, but that's good defensive play on that occasion by uh, Cass or yeah, Paddy Casty turns over McCauley. A little bit of afters. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. As worth McCauley watching indeed. Worth back. watching indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Owen Beckham uh, is fouled there by Shea Cullen, but again, Owen has been dipped in and dipped yeah, out of the yeah, game. Yeah, quiet enough. And I suppose the Gales might have expected a little bit more from Owen, especially when they were struggling on their own kickouts there for a while. But they seem to have steadied down. Connor McShea run two or three kickouts um, to to try and even the thing out a wee bit again and, and Beckham has won a free here out well beyond the 45 metre line yeah big kick for Owen Beckham in the summer sunshine in Brewster the ball kicked in not a good ball John Real might make something out of it Real he'll never give up I don't know that's one thing for sure John Real gathers possession feeds it back out towards Josh Horn who played 30 minutes in this opening half it is flowing through Horn in possession lays it back now to Aaron Nolan Nolan looks up uh, Ballin and Lake filter everybody bar one player behind the ball at this stage as Connor as Johnny Casty uh, now lays the ball forward there to uh, Connor Love Love crossfield there eventually coming to the aforementioned Jack Turney who's on the field to play for Inniskillen gives it inside there to Aaron Nolan Nolan gets a shot away that's a fine effort fine from Aaron Nolan he's in a good half he has really steady yeah. half and he's finished it there um, on a high note with that that was just beyond the 45 metre line but again Enniskillen had to work really really hard for that score um, played it backwards in and out and, and across a number of times before they found that little bit of space for Aaron Nolan um, Belnalek have loads of players back but the impressive thing is how hard they're working when they are back Jet yeah Jared Goller may well sound the half time whistle he has sounded the half time whistle here with 31 minutes and 25 seconds of absolutely 
brilliant fair, it has to be said, for the people watching this game on Monaghan Brothers, Fermanagh GA TV, across whether you're in Fermanagh or across Ireland or across the world. I'm sure you've enjoyed that 30 minutes of football as Mark. I think you and I have certainly enjoyed it. Absolutely. That. You couldn't have asked for more um, in terms of, of the, the application of the two teams, the, the quality of some of the individual performances have been absolutely exceptional. Like Dara McGurn and, and Garvin Quigley and Glenn Tracy, we've mentioned for, for Belnalek, have been absolutely superb. Um, and a skill and don't have the same level in terms of, of, of standout individual performers, but having been dominated probably yet for, for the last 20 minutes of that half, they're still only four points down. So they'll be probably be happy enough that the half-time whistle has arrived and give them a chance maybe to get themselves settled, make a change or two maybe, um, and see if they can work their way back into this game. And how, from your opinion, can the... Well, what's, what's between the sides? Well, there's just four points, four points between the sides, yeah. so it's not a big gap. But if you were making changes, uh, you know, whether that be positional changes or changes in personnel or changes in tactics, what if you were in that in a skill and dressing room what would you be suggesting because they are being they are struggling yeah they are struggling um they're struggling and they probably have done well to only be before behind at this stage given the dominance of Belnalek uh, since the Enniskillen penalty but I suppose a couple of things um if Richard O'Callaghan mm. is fit I certainly would look to get Richard in because the Gales are struggling in the middle of the field uh, Richie would give them a presence Richie would give them a presence there in under the kick out. So if, if, if as they have done, Belnalek seem to have closed off a lot of avenues for the, the kick outs that Anna Skillen have been working on, they could kick the ball just out on top of Richie O'Connell and, and then he would, win his, he would win his fair share of them. The other thing I would do, um, I would find a way to get Connor Love into the game. Um, I would move Connor probably to centre half forward. Um, they're not able to get the ball into him. Um, Garrett Cavanagh is doing a very good job, but it is noticeable as well. Belnalek are very wise to the threat of Connor Love and when the ball goes into his area two or three other players make their way into that area as well so that there's no space for Connor. he might just be harder to pin down if he's coming from the middle third um, so I would have a go with that for 10 minutes and as I say if Richie's uh, fit for half an hour I would certainly throw Richie in as well Yeah so a big half time team talk required for the men from Inneskillen that's the, of the two brothers it'll be Simon who has the most work I would suggest to do I'm looking out at uh, Colin Bradley there and his backroom team having a chat in the middle of the field they'll be pretty relaxed Darren McGurn has had an outstanding first half I think he's ended up with a goal and four Brian Owens has kicked over three points and Garvin Quigley has kicked three points those two goals of course coming for Inneskillen one from the penalty spot from Owen Beckham in the 11th minute uh, put the Gales three points in front but since then it has been the Gales that have d or Ballinelec that have dominated the game but that penalty goal in the 25th minute uh, from or that goal I should say from Connor Kelly in the 25th minute clawed them back into this uh, game so at half time here this game brought to you in association with Greentown Environmental and we thank them for being our match sponsor today uh, for this pulsating encounter here in Brewster Park we hope wherever you are in the world you're enjoying this broadcast on Fermanagh GA TV Mark and I will take a short break at half time and we'll be right back for second half coverage Greentown Environmental Ireland's trusted provider of infrastructure maintenance we offer a range of integrated and essential services becoming a growing concern for our environment. Fortunately, we're specialists in invasive weed control and can provide insurance bag treatment plans to eliminate this destructive plant and many others. Environmental provides gully and drainage services to clear any blockages and make sure everything is running smoothly. 
Our sister company, Green Time TM, specializes in all aspects of traffic management. They're committed to providing a personal service with professional results.
Welcome back here to Brewster Park for this Westville Hotel Division 1 League game on Monon Brothers for Mana GA TV. And we thank our match sponsor here this evening, Greentown Environmental, as Jared Gallagher from the Devonish St. Mary's Club is about to throw the ball in. The sun has uh, gone behind the clouds for momentarily, I would suggest, as the ball is fed in there, looking for John Rehill in a skill and gills, looking for a bright opening to this second half, the eight trail. Uh, 2 3 to 1 10. That's a four point margin. They're in possession of the football. To, who Owen Bickham floats it in, but it's gone to the left hand side and gone wide. Wide for in a, in a skill and mark. Yeah, just looking around, Jet, don't see any changes on either side, um, positional or personnel. Um, good win from the, the throw in for the Gales, and that was a chance maybe that Owen Bickham was capable of taking and it would have certainly settled the gales um, if they had managed to, to, to clip that one over but unfortunately it just dropped wide yeah just the one change during the first half that seen uh ryan mcdonald uh, come off the field of play and he was replaced by jack tierney wearing number 19 as glenn tracy gives the ball over towards ryan mcnulty and Belenelec build from the back now in the shape of lee cullen gives it to his twin brother that's shea shea Striding forward, been tackled there. The referee allows play to continue. Garrett Kavna lays it back to Lee Cullen. Cullen bounces the ball, has support from Kavna again. Flicks the ball into space. Ball picked up there by Monaghan. Lays it off to Shea Cullen. This is a good build up from uh, the Bell and man. Not the best ball in the world from Shea. Tried to feed it in there to Conor McCauley, but was well read on this occasion and coming out strongly with it is Johnny Casty. Casty running into a bit of trouble, but he glides over the Brewster Park surface, but gives the ball away. Not the best ball in the world there from uh, Johnny. He ran into a cul de sac as yeah, such and gave the ball away. Johnny was trying to do it nearly all himself. Mm. Um, and just again, the work rate of the Bell and players meant that that was never going to be a good idea because they tracked him back and eventually bottled him up Jet. Yeah, Cian Connor gathers possession, uses it sensibly, gives it back there to uh, Cullen. Cullen lays it forward on this occasion there towards Peter Monaghan. Monaghan goes to ground. It was uh, Paddy Casty that put in that tackle there, was it? Or Paddy uh, Rehill, yeah. Paddy yeah, Rehill, yeah, I Paddy should say. Yeah. Yeah. Paddy um, Rehill. And again, you know, the, the, the Gales have been on the edge with their tackling there in, in the last minute and a half or so. So it was real. They've come out with real intent. Um, there's no doubt they are, they are determined to get themselves back into this game. Um, I but think, I think the referee's going to bring this yeah, ball no, forward, is it? No, no, he's left he's, it. Yeah, I thought he was indicating to bring it forward. Darren McGorn looking cross field, gives it uh, inside uh, there towards Speed, and he eventually comes there to Garvin Quigley. Quigley gets it again on the left boot. Great effort by Quigley. What a score. What a score. Very little back lift there. Absolutely. Very little space to operate and popped it over the bar. Look, he, he was he was standing still, Jet. Yeah. As you say, no back lift. On the, just within, it was slightly inside the 45 metre line. But an absolutely brilliant left footed strike from Garvin. Yeah, that's his third, fourth point of this game. And we've only played 33 minutes of it. And... He has registered four points. He's been one of the shining stars here for Balanelec this evening. Ball fed forward now to the hard working uh, Connor McShea for Inniskillen Gales. McShea feeds it inside to uh, Kieran Smith, but again turned over. And Glenn Tracy is the man coming out with it. The Ballin or Dar McGorn, I should say, is the man coming out with it. Gives it there to Shea Cullen. Cross field it goes to the goalkeeper Connor McGovern. McGovern out the field it comes. Tracy striding forward, has support if need be, uses that support. Belenek patient in their build up now, ball in the hands of Ronan Quigley, back to Glenn Tracy. Slightly higher press from Inneskill and Gales as Fergal Keenan finds some space, fists the ball forward. Strong tackling but well held there by Peter Monaghan. Lays it forward there to Brian Owens. Owens intelligently flicks it back to Kane Connor. Connor comes out with it. Finds a little bit of space. Does he fancy his chances? I think he does. Connor, well, he's still going somehow. Now he goes to ground. Referee allows play to continue. Harsh enough. Harsh, harsh, harsh enough, yeah. 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 Although you could argue Kane had the opportunity to have the shot before yeah. he ran into trouble. Yeah. 
As the ball fed forward there now by Conor McShea. Good ball to John Rehill. Rehill has support. This is better. Conor Kelly. Oh, final ball not good. And the hard work of Fergal Keenan. He's a, an understated star in this team. He's playing really, really well. Popping up in, in crucial places at crucial times for Balalek. As is this man, Glenn Tracy. Gets it back there to James Speed. Speed gives it to McCauley. McCauley, strong and powerful, but brings it into trouble. Still bringing it into trouble. Been turned over on this occasion by Aaron Nolan, or by Kieran Smith. Smith gives it eventually out there to Paddy Real. Real delivers it along. That could be a mark. Uh, it's called there by Connor Kelly. And Kelly, who scored a goal and a point in this game already, should pop this one over from the edge of the D. Bring it back to four points. That he does. Fine score by Conor Kelly and a much yeah. needed score I would suggest. A much needed score is right. Um, brilliant ball in outside of the boot from, from Paddy Rehill um, and Conor Kelly showed and took the took the mark and, and comfortably slaughtered it over. But you're right Jet, that, that point was, was very much needed um, because the Gales are hanging on a wee bit at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, so again full press on this time on the on the Belnalek kick out. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, Ryan McNulty does with this one, but he finds uh, uh, Gareth Kavanagh, yep. who popped back into that little pocket of space and picked it up. And it's interesting the the kick out strategies in his skill and want to go long. Ryan uh, McNulty wants to go short. As the two Collins link up there yet again, Shea and Lee, and eventually over the far side of the field is that man Fergal Keenan again. Gives it back to Shea Cullen. Back inside to Dara McGoran. McGoran been tackled strongly there on this occasion by Paddy Casty. A great battle between these two as McCauley comes forward. And McGoran hungry for the ball, gathers it on this occasion. McCauley, or McGoran been faced up there by Johnny. Johnny Casty on this occasion. Close to the sideline, out yeah. over the sideline. And that will be a line ball which will be taken by R. Nolan. Again, brilliant defender by the Gales. Numbers back and, and incredibly hard work. Kieran Smith does well. Gives it to John Real. He's drifted out from the forward division and getting his hand on ball. Sprays it over the far side of the field. That's young Tierney, I think it is. He leads, lays it forward to Josh Horn. Horn gives the ball forward. Well picked up by Connor Love. Not really involved in the game much to date, but... You know that the style of Connor Love when he picks it up, gives it there to Kieran Smith. Flicked forward, not the best ball in the world. Coming through from the back there was Fergal Keenan, I yeah, think it was. And yeah. I think the referee got that one spot on. I think he got it right. Yeah. Um, Fergal went up to try and fist the ball from, I think it was Connor McShea, yeah. but followed through just on, yeah. on the edge of the D there. No, that's a fair enough call. Took and ball and all is the same. Took, goes. took ball, man and all is right, Jet. Yeah. And John Rehill should be able to slot this one over and again gradually start to eat into that lead. Yeah. Important points, they keep ticking away at them. John Rehill, uh, steadies down, edge of the D. Connor Kelly kicked one a moment ago. This will be Rehill's first score of the game if he manages to pop it over, and he does. So that's back to a three point game. Back to a three point game. So yeah. the Gales could do with the next point. They get the next score, then we have, we have game on again, Jet. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to watch the kick out strategy here again. It's a Full squeeze, as you say, and yeah. Balanac looking to operate the bunch, but mo maybe moving too quick. But Gales then drop off. Yeah. That's happened a couple of times, so it's not really the, the full no, squeeze. No, look, and, and you'd have thought there 10 seconds ago they had the full squeeze on, and, and mm. but it evaporated very, very quickly. I'd say Simon Bradley would be very disappointed with that. Ball fed forward. Cian Connor picks it up. Connor, an opportunity to kick a point a moment ago. This is good from Cian. Lays it back there, not the best ball in the world to Brian Owens, but Owens recovers. Will he go for the post without looking over the shoulder? Goes to the left hand side and goes wide. Yeah, uh, Kean, Kean Connor had a very quiet first half um, jet, but I'm looking there, he seems to have moved up into the forward lane um, and he's had a couple of, of contributions to make there. Now he hasn't got a score out of it yet, but he's adding he's adding another little bit to that Belnalek attack. Yeah, it looks like Speed and Cian Connor may have swapped places. We'll keep an eye on that uh, in a moment as Kieran Smith, who's had a good start this second half, tries to get in the edge of it again, gives it into Casty. Casty's closed down by one, two, three, four. Look how hard Belnalek are working. The speed they got round uh, yeah. 
Casty on that occasion is amazing. But this time, ball has been held on for too long, and the referee's given a free in. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, but for a split second, it looked as if Johnny Casty was going to get away there. But as you quite rightly mentioned, yet the, the, the appetite of the Bell and defenders to get back and, and close down space um, turned him over at that stage. And then, obviously, um, the Bell and defender got done for over carrying. I think it was Fergal Keenan, was it? Fergal, I think, yeah. That's so two two foul or two concessions of freeze in yeah, a row by, it's, it's by an, Fergal. It's, an, it's another handy one for John Rehill, and, and this brings it back to the two point game that we talked about a minute yeah. ago. Well, Simon Bradley would have talked at half time, I'm sure, about getting a couple of early scores and chipping away at the Ballinac lead, bringing it down to something really manageable, and they've done that fairly quickly. Three points on the bounce if this goes over. Yeah. Two from John Rehill and one from Connor Kelly will mean that it's. 2-6 to 111. And, and you know, Colin Bradley will be disappointed because Belnalek had a couple of opportunities and didn't take them. Um, and, and John's about to pop this one over. Real kicks it. Kicks it well. Second point of the game. We're down to a two-point game. And I'm sure our audience who are watching this broadcast on Monaghan and Brothers from Anna GA TV will be looking forward to the remaining 20 minutes as this game is on a knife edge, I would suggest now. Yeah, no, the next score or two is going to be very, very important. Uh, it's important from a Bell and point of view that they, they, they win their own kick out here um, and maybe tag on a score because the impetus, the impetus uh, it strangely, is with the Gales, even though they haven't played that well since the, this, the resumption. That's the voice of Mark Henry with us here on Fermana GA TV as that kick out is kicked well by uh, Ryan McNulty, found the intended target who was Shea or Lee Cullen and Lee has possession of the football again, gives it over there to Glenn Tracy, Tracy striding forward again, looks up, finds support there from Garvin Quigley, took it into trouble again, heavy challenge there by Paddy Casty which leaves Quigley on the ground but the referee seen no foul within no, that. I think it was fair enough. Um, yeah. It was a robust challenge, all right, from from Paddy, but there was nothing illegal in it, and ball was turned over. Um, uh, Garvin's struggling a wee bit just at the minute, but hopefully he'll be okay. Yeah, that's the second time he's been down yeah. and had to receive attention. Garvin, what age? Twenty-one. Garvin will be twenty-one at this yeah. stage, yeah. Um, developing into a very fine footballer, as you, we said earlier on, he's he's, he's slight in stature, Slightly but built, he yeah. has bags of skill. His yeah. movement is superb, and look, as we saw there, he doesn't lack in bravery either. Um, Jet, so yeah. he's a he's an important cog in this Bell and Alec wheel. Well, he's back on his feet, which Bell and Alec will be glad to see. Um, so. And look, bar, bar the two frees from John Rehill, has been a bit of a stalemate since mm. half time. Mm -hmm. Well, important moments in this game because Ennis Gillen have clawed it back to just those uh, two points 2 6 to 1 11. As the clouds gather here in Brewster Park. Ennis Gillen warming up a sub down below us as Connor Watson uh, as the ball is fed forward by John Rehill. This ploy of bringing Real further out the field has worked well. Ball now in the hands of the hard-working Conor McShea. Lays it inside. Strong tackle there on this occasion by Cullen. Referee says too strong on Aaron Nolan. So the two wing half-backs, Aaron Nolan, Kieran Smith, have handled an awful lot of ball early in this second half. Yeah, Aaron Nolan was shaping for a, a, another strike at goal there. Um, and was it, was it Lee Cullen? Yeah, Lee. Uh, come across. And again, he was just marginally too high with the tackle and, and left Jared Love with, with no uh, choice but to, to blow for the free and again John Reels standing in the vicinity of the D with a, a fairly straightforward chance yeah Colin Bradley and Eddie McElroy and um, is it Cecil Cecil's it? there yeah, too there yeah as well would we'll be disappointed as John Real shot I think that's gone to yeah, the right John right. has missed that one that's yeah. a bad miss that's a yeah. bad miss that would have brought it back to 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 single score yeah. that's a bad miss by John and it was very very scorable Big miss as Connor Watson, grandson of Peter Watson, who was chatting earlier on. As usual, a big welcome by Peter when you come to the press box in Enniskillen, as has been the case for the last maybe 30, 35 years. As coming off there is Connor Kelly, is it? That's yeah. Connor Kelly scored a goal in two 
and he's he's not best pleased about being taken off, but he's been replaced by Connor Watson. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to change it up a wee bit. The gears Connor Connor Kelly had done very very well. Mm. Um, unless he, maybe the Phillies running out of steam a wee bit, I'm not too sure. Um, I see Richie O'Callaghan now mm -hmm. uh, stripped and ready to come on as well, and that should be a boost for the Enniskillen team. Yeah, and Enniskillen are playing the better football in this second half. They're 15 minutes into it, and they have another opportunity, and Johnny Caste flicks it inside, first touch. Oh, the goalkeeper came out and committed himself, and Connor Watson nearly had his hands on it, but that could have been a dream first touch for uh, Connor Watson. Connor McCauley. Wins his team a free and keeps his discipline to be admired, yeah, I have to absolutely. say there. Absolutely. Um, you, you would have thought the, the way the, the, the Gales fellas were, were going after Connor there, mm. they were hoping to get a reaction. I but Connor did, yeah, Connor did really well, um, kept the discipline, got us 10 metres, um, and, and hopefully we'll be able to, from a bell and a leg point of view, put them on the front foot again. Yeah, Ronan Beatty has had a quiet game, Ronan. He makes his way off the field of play and he's replaced by Richie O'Callaghan. So big player coming on at a crucial stage of the game 15 minutes gone in the second half uh, two points between the sides ball picked up there on this occasion uh, by Frank Rafferty yeah, he did well to get out of there Jeff yeah, yeah, yeah. Did well probably to get shouldn't out have there. got out no he shouldn't have got yeah. out is right so Ballinac haven't had their hands on the ball for quite some time Gales tackling really really strong good play on this occasion by Brian Owens Richard Callan goes to face him up Ball fed inside now to Fergal Keenan. Keenan lays it off to Tracy. Tracy back inside there to Garvin Quigley. Oh, high challenge again. Very oh, high. Garvin very high. Now look, as we, Garvin is, is diminutive, but Aye. that was very high. That was in and around the face area. Yeah. Um, hopefully Garvin's okay. Was it Kieran? Was it Kieran Smith? Do you know what? I didn't pick. I didn't pick that up because I looked. I looked uh, initially to see what way uh, young Garvin Quigley was. Um, well, it's just hard to see. We might get another oh, look at it here. James, the James Ferguson, isn't it? Is it James? Yeah. That's a definite yeah. yellow, that's for sure. Yeah, referee talking to James. And yeah, the yeah, yellow. Yellow card. And James is strong. I've seen James. He was in with the county. Right, uh, yeah. Um, and he certainly stopped Garvin there. But look, Garvin's up on the feet again. Um, Garvin will keep coming back for more. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, well, I see Balalek warming up Caelan Owens down there. As Darren McGarney scored 1 5 in this game, uh, or 1 4, I should say, in this game to date. Can this be 1 5? He's got the height. Has he got the distance? Has he got the accuracy? He's dropping in around the square. Oh, brilliant take by Owen Bacon. Bacon done really, really well there. Oh, got it out to Josh Horn, but the tackles go on. Horn, ooh. fortunate enough. Fortunate um, enough, I would yeah. suggest. Yeah. So Bacon floats that ball into space, close to the sideline. He was asking a lot of. He was yeah. asking a lot of Connor Watson now to get that one. Yeah, ball out over the sideline, unforced error. Kane Connor takes it. So the scoring has certainly dropped off in this second half. We had 18 minutes played, and it's three points to one in the second half in favour of Innes Gillen, which means, oh, that's a high challenge there, or a, f a foot challenge there on Glenn Tracy with the referee. Spotted that. Glenn back on his feet, gets the game moving again. Fergal Keenan gives it there to Keen Connor. Back it goes to Keenan. Keenan does well. Yeah. He's impressed, mate. Yeah, yeah, tidy, very tidy. Yeah. And prepared to do the, the, the unpleasant, unseen work as well, Jet. Yeah, and the hard yards yeah, absolutely. All, all over the pitch. Picked up there now by Ronan Quigley. Ronan lays it off to Owens. Cross field, he comes, has support from Fergal Keenan again. Keenan, good ball into space over on the far side. Back it goes to Keenan again. This is third or fourth time involved in the move. Gives it back there now to Rafferty. Rafferty gets it back out to Kane Connor. Connor comes forward. 45 metres out. Oh, oh, spots the run of Shea Colin. Newman versus Colin. Newman done really, really well again. Got good pair of hands on that ball and cleared it because that was a fearsome sight. Shea Colin Absolutely. bearing down on you. Absolutely. And again, Kian Newman saw it early mm -hmm. and committed. Um, even though Shea Cullen was, as you say, bearing down on, Kian Newman committed to it and made a really good clearance. That was a great pass from Kian Ah, brilliant. Brilliant vision and, and just, just missed out on the execution by, by millimetres yeah Richie O'Callaghan 
in possession now for the Gales. 19 minutes played, two points between the sides. Now in possession of the football there for Innes Gillen. It's Paddy Rail lays it off there one more time to Conor McShea. McShea as Belenlech filter everybody behind the ball bar, two players. And Garvin Quigley's trying to make sure that it's only one player as Richie O'Callum brings it into trouble. And is there a turnover? Looks as if there may well be. Richie O'Callum foraging for it over there, the referee. Well, that's the loudest cheer of the evening for that turnover. Massive turnover, massive yeah. turnover. Um, again, it's just we, we've, we've said this a number of times this evening, and, and both sides deserve credit. Their appetite for hard work is, is, is very, very impressive. Um, and you know, if you delay the ball as Richie did there, you, you're, you're asking for trouble. It's a bit of a, like a nearly like a championship edge this but game. And it's that, hard to believe. Yeah, it's the absolutely. First, first league game of the season. This is strong, powerful play by Conor McCauley. McCauley lays it off to Brian Owens. Owens comes out, gathers the possession. Shea Cullen calling for it over this near side of the field. Can he be spotted? Yes, indeed he can. Can he pop it over the bar? Yes, indeed he can. Over yeah. the black spot it goes. Brilliant score. That's the second time that Shea Cullen has got himself into a great position. This time he finishes with a superb point and Ballinleck lead by three. Yeah, Peter Monaghan got it across to him very quickly before he was closed down and Shea finished it very, very well. That's the reward for that turnover on Richie O'Callaghan we spoke about earlier. Yeah, Jet. Johnny Casty now trying to get an immediate response but going back there as quickly and picking up the pieces again as Garrett Kavanagh comes out strong with it. His arm's been held. Referee awards the free. So... Balanek stretched their lead out to three points, 21 minutes played in this first second half, I should say. You're watching the opening game of the Westville Hotel Division 1 League here in Fermanagh. We're coming to you live from Brewster Park on Monaghan Brothers, Fermanagh GA TV. The, the game in the melting pot, we always thought this would be an intriguing encounter. It's going to go to the wire by the looks of things. Nine minutes to play. Darren McGoran in possession of the football. 2-6 to 1-12. Ballinac lead. The ball is in the hands of Fergal Keenan. Gives it over there now to Darren McGoran. McGoran trying to encourage the Inniskillen Gales players to come out a little bit so that they can open up a wee bit of space. That space he's trying to feed it into is being filled there by Shea Cullen. Ball goes to ground. Conor McCauley picks it up. McCauley still in possession. Has an overlap there from Peter Mullen. Can Mullen finish? The answer is yes. A beautifully crafted score by Peter Mullen. Oh, and Owen Beacon yeah, there. Yeah. Well, Owen Beacon could be in a little bit of bother and now it's starting is starting to get a little bit out of hand. Peter Mullen was the man involved as well with the play. The ball well is the referee. Oh, you know, the, the referee has yeah, to, pull, he has to pull call, pull, call yeah. a halt to the play. Yeah, I think Owen Beacom could well be. He in could a be in trouble. Yeah, it yeah. looked look. It looked from here like a like a strike on on Conor McCauley. That was a fine fine score. It was a fabulous score. Yeah. Um, Peter Monaghan, Peter Monaghan yeah, yeah, finished it. And look, it was a, a brilliant move. It's well crafted. Well you know? crafted. Yeah. Uh, Shea Cullen had moved inside and come out and took a ball brilliantly, laid it off under serious pressure. Um, ball was worked out to Peter and, and he struck a brilliant point. So, yeah, referee is going to call. You know, look, this, this, if, if this is red as I expect it to be, this, this will be a serious dent. Yeah. 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 Straight, straight red card. Serious. For Oh, That's a serious blow to the Gales yeah. now. And I don't think I'll just get a quick look at it here on, on the replay. Is that ball? Well, yeah, hands hands to the face. Uh, Owen Beacom really can't have too many complaints. On that occasion. Just a pity because the game had been played, it was it Look, was aggressive it at times, absolutely it was, it was always competitive and, and there yeah. was a, a, an edge to it yeah. and that's what we want in our games yeah. but there had been nothing untoward up until that moment yeah and to be fair to our referee tonight Joe Goller he's handled the game well he has strong challenge goes in on Conor McCauley again on Johnny Casty this occasion the referee is going to come over he always remains very calm. He, does, he, does. <laughs> yeah. he doesn't get Everybody rattled. around him here is losing their uh, heads, and Jared's very calm, he is, is right. Yeah. Chris Breen down there, uh, making his views known to Jared Goller. Meanwhile, Darren McGorn outside of the right boot, but I think he's. Yeah, it's just weighed at yeah. the near side yeah. here. Um, probably probably should have worked that one out. Probably, yeah. Yeah. That was it. Um, yeah, it was a very tight angle, and, and the wrong side for a right footed player. 
So 16 12. Um, is there a way back for the Gales? I think they'll struggle, now, they'll struggle now down to 14. Um, it'll take a massive effort. Yeah. How long do you say is left yet? Six, six yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll take a massive effort now with, with, with losing Owen. Yeah, see Ronan quickly now. He's gone back in yeah, there wearing he 15. Can, he can He's sit there now, yeah, just in front of Connor Love. Um, yeah. And, you know, you would say if, if Bell and Lake don't concede a goal at this stage, they will see this out. Yeah, and, and Garrett Cavan has done a fine job on Connor Love. Uh, he superb. hasn't really featured, No, has he? he hasn't. Um, Garrett's done a super job one on one with him, and as I said earlier, when there was a, a smell of danger from Connor, the the the, the Belnalek players got across to help Garrett Cavan, and they've done a really good job there yeah, because Connor's a serious threat when he's on form. Two Collins will have enjoyed their return to uh, Fermanagh senior football. Uh, Lee hasn't played for a couple of years. Shea dipped in and dipped out, I suppose, with his work commitments over this past couple of years. Be a huge plus if them two lads can stay around for this battle on the left side. They're edging, I suppose, towards the, the 30 mark, so they're, yeah, they're, they're years at this top yeah, level or maybe coming close indeed, to look at that, that's, that's That's the way it is now, um, Jet, with the game. But um, with those lads back, this 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 victory here, if, it, if, if indeed that's how it pans out tonight against the Gales here in Brewster Park, will be a massive boost to this team as well, heading out into the league campaign. Mm. Glenn Tracy lays it off to Dara McGorn. McGorn faced up by Johnny Casty, but McGorn can go back. It's all about retaining possession now. Is the name of the game for Bell and Lake. They yeah, lead the into the clock. Four the minutes the plus whatever. The onus is an skill now to come out and press. Yeah. Um, Bell and Lake are very comfortable on the ball here. Quigley done really well again, but Conor McShea, he has worked so hard for Inneskillen, but still Quigley goes. and Brilliant from Garvin Quigley. I mean... There's been so many top ah. performers here for the Bell and Lech, uh, team here tonight, but Garvin Quigley is yeah. outstanding. And look, you know, we associate Garvin with, with kicking scores, mm. with, with jinky runs, with, with wonderful skills, but what he has shown tonight is, as I said a couple of times, is immense bravery, and in that particular play there, his determination um, under serious pressure, lost the ball, regained it, and drove forward and won a free um, but he's had a superb evening. And what is with with stood, you know, the physicality yes, of absolutely. the game. He stood up to really, really well. As Dar McGurn tries to put another point on the scoreboard for Balalek, and that he does. Brings his tally to 1-5, and, well, he'll sleep well tonight, he'll be he'll be pleased. Another, another impressive performer. Yeah. He can be happy with his evening's work as well. Yeah. So, one f any day you go out and hit 1-5. Another bit of nonsense yeah. going on. As substitute coming on to the field of play. Yeah, I think it's Killing Owens on and Frank Frank yeah. Rafferty coming off yeah. there. Well, it's just getting a wee bit touchy yeah. here. Referee just wants the goalkeeper to kick it out, and I think that's a very sensible approach. Get the game moving and deal with it that way rather than any stoppages. Pulling the jersey, Johnny Casty. Yeah, that's a look, free. Yeah, they were always going to be happy to well, jump. The referee to, to is blowing. Has I he? Think. Yeah, he has. Yeah, well, if he has they were always going. Yeah, they were always going to be happy to yeah. foul Johnny out there. The last thing they need is, uh, from a Belna like point of view, is Johnny getting a a, a gap in the defence and, and and making his way through it. So they, they did the right thing from a Belna like point of view uh, and stopped him out at the forty five metre line. So two six players one fourteen. That's seventeen to twelve. Going to the last two minutes of this encounter, brought to you by our match day sponsor this afternoon. That is Green Town Environmental. We thank them for that. As Connor Love slots this one over the bar. Fine strike by Connor Love. First score of the game. And that's not something that, you know, if the Gales are going to win a game like this, Connor Love needs to be yeah, chipping yeah. in with three, four, five yeah. points, I would suggest. Connor needs to be scoring, you know, maybe one, three, one, four every day yeah. he goes out. Um, but um, that hasn't happened today, and the Gales have suffered because of that. Um, in fact, you know, the, the Gales attack has been quite blunt all evening, Jet. Yeah, yeah. Conor McShea has worked really hard. Ronan Beatty just didn't get into the game. Conor Kelly uh, notched a goal on two but was taken off. Conor Love just hasn't really featured. John Real had to come out the field to get his hand on the right. ball. So, it's yeah, I suppose a couple of big players missing as another shot is fired in there by Conor Love but to the left and wide. But 
couple of big players, I suppose. Richard Callan only coming on the last 15 minutes, and Brandon yeah, Horn, Brandon a huge Horn, loss. Yeah, look, you know, when you have when you have Brandon and Richie and and Owen Beckham across the middle of the field, it makes a whole, it makes everything very very different for the Gales. Um, it means the likes of John Rehill and so on doesn't have to come out because they're winning ball. Yeah. Um, but uh, they definitely have struggled up front this evening, and bar the first 10 minutes. Um, you know, you could argue well in the lack of dominated this game yet. Um, even the first 10 minutes after half time, um, it was only freeze that kind of got, but uh, the gears back into it. Yeah, a couple of freeze from John. From John, yeah. Yeah. Ball goes to ground. Ball flicked forward to Richo Callan. O'Callan flicks it forward quickly. A good play again by Kieran Smith. Smith still going, but Shirley Cullen goes back in there. And now two, three players will get round. And again, it's that work ethic and. You know? Yeah, look, uh, there, there's a work ethic, but you're talking to uh, Jet about quality players. Mm. You know, you have the two Collins in that defence. Garrett Cavan has been very good. We've spoken about Fergal Keenan this mm. evening as well. Um, that's a really sol solid defensive unit. You know, at club level, that's a really, really tight unit. And you throw Cian Connor, Glenn Tracy, two Collins, as you say. No, that's, that's a, a strong that's unit. That's a serious unit now. There's no doubt about ball it. Ball picked up by the four match and Cian Connor from that throw up ball. Back goes to Ronan quickly. Didn't release the ball quick enough for Conor McCauley. Another play hasn't got his uh, name on the score sheet, but he's worked hard throughout as well. Lays the ball forward, but a good turnover on this occasion. Josh Horn gathers it, gives it to Aaron Nolan. Cannon is killing. Finished with a flurry. Ball in the hands of Conor Watson. Watson pops it in, pops it over the, over bar. the bar. So are we down to we're down to a one score game? Is there time? 31 minutes played. Uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't an awful lot of stoppages yet, so I'd suggest that we're, we're not far away from the final whistle. Yeah. So, great crowd in here this evening, and enjoying a good, good atmosphere here. Well, they certainly have, have witnessed a, a, a Super League game, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, well, if the rest of the Westville Division 1 League is anything like this, it'll be an enjoyable summer in the Erin County. I suppose that's the thing about the split season, um, Jet. We, mm. We'll get playing league games from now right through into the autumn yeah. with all county players available, and we can see the quality here tonight because of that. Yeah, and in decent weather as well. You know, brilliant take again. Well picked up by Dan Lalek. Opportunity to put another score on the board. Back it goes to Shea Cullen. Ambitious from Shea. Doesn't even put very well. Now, in it. In a skill and have yeah, a chance. Was, was a bit Newman. rash from Shane. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, should have been, should have, yeah, should have been making sure that it went at least dead. Yeah, should have held position. But so here's an, an opportunity for the Gales. 32 minutes played. Last chance, I would suggest. They need a goal to level the game. Richie O'Callaghan's in possession. Gives it to John Rehill. Patience is needed. Josh Horn back to Rehill. Over it goes now to Aaron Nolan. Nolan lays it back to Josh Horn. Horn to Rahill, Rahill looks up, 45 metres out, force back, Richie O'Callaghan, nobody really moving no. inside, so it'll have to be recycled, Johnny Casty, in this, or Balalek of everybody, the centre's really closed, there's a little bit of space out wide, Josh Horn decides to turn back yet again, referee looks at his watch, opportunity now for Paddy Casty, Casty gives it back to the brother, the twin brother, Set of twins on both sides. Back it goes to Casti. Casti this time, route one. In round the danger area it goes. This is the chance. Blocked away. The keeper gets his hands on it. Or was it the forward? I think it was the keeper. The Looks umpire, like a 45. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the umpire single wide, but it was always a 45. He's still remonstrating that it was a wide, but I think we all were clear <laughs> that it was uh, a 45. So Keen Newman... We'll float this one into yes, the square. He'll, he'll throw this one into the mixer and see if he gets a, a, a stroke of luck with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm surprised that Josh Horn and Paddy Casty haven't pushed up into the square as well because Ballinleck certainly well, look, have the numbers. There's no value in having them there. They no. might as well go in. Oh, Keen Newman has kicked it. Wide. Ball to the left hand side and kicked it wide. I'm not sure what instruction went out to Keen, but that was one to be floated into the square. Absolutely. And hope for the best, but it wasn't the case. So looks like. Colin Bradley, the younger brother, is going to have uh, a victory over his older brother. He runs up the sideline to instruct his goalkeeper, who I have been impressed. And I see him taking kickouts with left foot and right foot. And 
Yeah, and he has dealt he has dealt well with anything yeah. that's come in on top of him as well. A few difficult balls when the sun was in his eyes in the first half, so the ball is kicked out in the middle of the field. It's all over here in Brewster Park. It's a victory for the Lackers, as they're known as, 2-8 to 1-14. To it certainly has been an entertaining encounter. We've had a wee bit of everything, a couple of penalties, a sending off, uh, three goals. We have uh, 22 points. All in all, a hugely enjoyable 60 minutes, Mark Henry. Ah, look at that. That was a, that was a super contest. Um, and laced, particularly in the first half, with, with, with periods of absolutely outstanding football. The second half got kind of bogged down into a bit of a war of attrition at times. Um, Jet with the two teams cancelling each other out for long periods. And look, Belnalek did enough to keep the Gales at arm's length. And then the, the sending off of Owen Beacom effectively ended uh, Ennis Gillen's chances of getting back into the game. But you'd have to say now, uh, bar the first 10 minutes, uh, Belnalek with a dominant outfit throughout that game. Yeah, you know, you look at the Gales first and foremost, Paddy Casty, uh, Paddy Real worked hard, Johnny Casty worked hard. The two wing half backs, I thought, Aaron Nolan, Kieran Smith put in a good shift. So do the Conor McShay, John Real when he came out, but maybe just not the same intensity and, uh, you know, that the yeah. Lack brought to the game. Yeah, look, I, I think the Gales certainly worked hard, um, as did Belnalek. I think the, the, the difference was. There was more cutting edge with Belnalek. Um, they, when they attacked, they looked a lot more dangerous than the Gales did. The Gales did really well until they got to the final third. Um, and I suppose it has to be said yet they were a little bit blunt now. Um, they struggled to create clear cut chances. Yeah. Uh, whereas Belnalek, certainly for that period, you know, at the the second quarter, um, were were every time they they attacked, they they, they created a clear cut chance, and by and large, they took them. So, you know, that the, the cutting edge to me was the difference in the two teams. Both teams were, were well set up. Both teams at times defended well. Um, but the, the, the Belnalek lads certainly now had, had more of a cutting edge. Uh, Brian Owens, Garvin Quigley inside. Um, you know, Dara McGurn. They had, they had a number of options in there and they caused problems for the Gales all evening. And Richie O'Callaghan, Brandon Horn, Callum Jones will make a serious impact Look, to that Gales team? They will, you know, I'm, I'm not sure there's much more to come back into the Bell and the Lack mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. but uh, the two guys you mentioned there, the three guys you mentioned, um, all county players, mm -hmm. will make a massive difference to the Gales. And as I say, look, the, the last year when I watched the Gales, when they had Richie and, and Brandon and, and Owen Beacom across the middle of the field, it made them a very, you know, a very difficult team uh, to play against. And, you know, it allows them to get a, a foothold and plenty of possession and, you know, Connor Love, for example, was starved of possession tonight. And you could argue maybe if Brandon and Richie had been about, Connor would have been a much better served and, and been a much greater threat as well. Yeah, and Richie might have been a foil inside for him. Absolutely. He, is, he has been very yeah, effective in has, that role for yeah, the Gales too. Yeah. And finally, Belenac, they'll go home with the, the two points tonight. They'll look at their, their team performance. They'll look at individual performances. And Colin Bradley, I would suggest, would be a very, very happy man because individually uh, there were some brilliant performances. But as a team, they were excellent and their work rate and their intensity, everything was there. Yeah, look, I think Colin will be very pleased this evening. He'll be pleased first and foremost with the two points. Um, but I think beyond that, Jet, he'll be really pleased to have a, a strong panel of players together again. Mm -hmm. um, they have... In, in some ways they've laid down a bit of a marker here this evening it was clear from the intensity of this mm -hmm. game that both teams came here intent on doing that mm -hmm. and both teams wanted to leave here having laid down a marker Belnalek have done that so yes they'll be happy with the two points but I think Colin Bradley will be really really pleased that they have laid down a marker to the rest of the county mm -hmm. but also to themselves this will give them huge confidence moving forward and if they can retain the two Collins Oh, look, they're going to be a serious answer. Absolutely. We, we said it there a few minutes ago. You put those two Collins into that defence with other quality players mm -hmm. and you look then what they have in attack with, with Quigley, with Brian Owens, with Dara McGurn. You know, they have, they have most of what you need to be really, really competitive. Yeah, well, it's been an interesting evening. It's been an enjoyable evening here on Mono and Brothers from Mono GA TV. Uh, that's our first broadcast of the year uh, in terms of league and championship football. It has come to a conclusion. It has been an enjoyable evening, more so for the supporters of Ballinalec because they have scored one goal and 14 points. Inniskill and Gales have scored two goals and eight. It's a three-point victory for the visitors here to Brewster Park tonight. Ballinalec go home with the two points.
fans, they'll be extremely happy. We're very happy to have had Mark Henry on board here this afternoon or this evening for this game. We've enjoyed your company, Mark, and we'll uh, no doubt uh, feature you plenty of times throughout Hopefully the year. Hopefully, yeah. No, it's been a really enjoyable start to the season, I have to say. It's a delight to be here, actually, this evening. Good. Well, we'll certainly have you back on board. So that's a wrap for tonight. Uh, cameraman Stephen Kettles big thank you to him our producer here this evening Phil Flanagan wonderful job as ever so from Fermanagh GA TV until we meet again and I think that's possibly next weekend as there will be another uh, league fixture Phil Flanagan hoping to put out a league fixture every weekend if at all possible but for this evening from Brewster Park final score in the skill and 2-8 Ballinlech 1-14 we hope you've enjoyed this broadcast Slongo Foyle